if they return home, everything is kind of back to normal. But if you listen to, he has that monologue about, you know, everything is great. And I'm kind of like the hero and everyone's high-fiving him and looking at him. And what's really interesting is if you look at the movie, there are people who are wearing purple. And we know that King's color is purple as he's walking down the street. And it kind of, he has this weird sense of dread. Like, did I really win that? I don't know what's going on. He becomes kind of paranoid about it. So clearly it's had an effect on him. I was wondering, could be completely out there, if what happened in the quantum realm could for some reason, what ended up being either a simulation or maybe he's in a time loop where the reality that he returned to is not the same. Just because of how it was filmed, people are in purple, it seemed to be in that weird loop, and they're they're kind of ex- overexcited, and they know who Scott Lang is. But he was stuck in the quantum realm, so it's not like people would know of his journeys of defeating Kang. From my understanding, regular people don't know who Kang is. He's not a Thanos situation where everybody knew who he was. So... Could it be that this is a simulation or a loop or some kind of way of control? Because remember, he who remained, he controlled everything that Sylvie did. And remember, um, King the Conqueror, he knew who one all the Avengers were. He just got him confused. And remember, he answered to Cassie as Jellybean. So could this have been all a setup by either the consul to... Yeah maybe help them to find out if Scott is strong enough to help them in their secret war journey? Yeah, you know, me, me and my friend were, um, we were kind of discussing this after. We were like, did, did um, you know, what happened to Kang, like him going into the core or whatever it was, like, did that maybe do something that makes him more powerful? And, you know, it could be a situation, like you said, where, um, where Scott got sent back to you know some false world like that doesn't really doesn't really exist like it's not his true reality kind of thing um but and that could be the case that could be what they're doing but my feeling is that if they were if that is the path they went down i feel like we should have got some final kind of payoff of it like seeing seeing that like show don't tell kind of thing like we should have seeing you know can you know i don't know laughing about it or whatever like whatever it is like we should we should have got that in the end you know kind of to confirm that because you know now it's just you know it's it's a speculation now uh we don't know for sure if they're going to pull the trigger on that um so yeah so what do you think about that danny I could see it going that way. I could understand that, especially with with the people wearing purple. I I don't even I didn't even catch that, so I wanna I wanna check that out again. But um, there is a theory that's somewhat similar that I've heard a, a, a couple of places say, and that the whole entire thing is is a time loop. It would be nice that the whole the whole entire Kang saga is actually a time loop, like him him uh, uh in the council kind of like starting war and then the avengers kind of step in and kind of uh uh they're the ones that banish kang and then kang ends up in the quantum realm and then gets destroyed again and then ant-man leads up to the avengers things and then back to the council and then back to like banning him and it's it's kind of like a loop uh it it was it was very convoluted but like i i i kind of like that idea of like of something along those lines being some sort of time loop or uh, or you're stuck in a variant situation and uh it, it it leaves it leaves to more possibilities but um i didn't i didn't i didn't catch that with the ending of ant-man itself which would be pretty cool my 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 thought about kang dying it is it, it's possible that he's not dead because he probably did get sucked into that because he does have a, a another universe pretty much in that MacGuffin there um 
as we saw with like Scott Lang and, and his multiple variants and stuff, like multiplying and stuff in, when he was at the center of it. So maybe he's stuck in there and he goes mad and crazy like like Scott was supposed to. And maybe he finally comes out as the, the real big bad that we all want want to mm-hmm. see, like the real King the Conqueror, because now he's more crazy than ever coming out of it. Um, I, I do have a question, though, like because if if he is dead, if he's gone and they introduced these other Kangs, so they had uh, Immortus Kang, um, uh, Rama, Rama Tut Kang, and then I can't remember mm-hmm. the name of the third one, but it they was. introduced they, they introduced those. And uh, I'm wondering if you guys think that do we, are we still going to have Kang the Conqueror as the big bad or possibly just one of those, or maybe one that we haven't seen yet, maybe? This is what frustrates me because I feel like going forward, we're going to just get a variant king because it is dynasty. A variant king spread throughout until we get the big baddie. King the Conqueror could just be, again, like you said, a MacGuffin where he comes back even stronger, learning the knowledge that he had before. But I just hope that they don't cheapen the king experience by giving us all of these kings so that when we get to Kang, we just don't care anymore. That's true. That's true. Because if we get a Kang, let's say for every single movie and then every single Kang is defeated by one Avenger, that that kind of reduces his, his reputation. Uh Yeah, completely agree that that is my fear as well with this, that, you know, by the time we get the big bad, like, it's going to be so overdone already. We just, we just wouldn't care anymore. Like, yeah, because because see, what made Thanos so successful was, in a way, every person that was after him, even though it was individual stories, we slowly got to see his lackeys. We never yeah. got Thanos until it was time for Thanos to arrive in the the, the movie he did that I can't remember. And he he won he won man the Hulk like. <laughs> That that yeah, was that was a show of power Hulk. right there. <laughs> he was he, he never Hulk never kind of recovered from that. He never came back out during that scene again. He kind of just became smart Bruce. He changed his whole way of life because of that encounter. So you you, you had that whole thing going down, but this one. I, I, if you're gonna do a threat that's even more powerful than Thanos, you gotta treat him better than what you're doing to him now. He's coming across as a joke. He technically died twice. He who remains is dead. Yeah. This one king is dead. The other kings, if you notice, they excite they exiled him. They didn't even kill him. And yeah. it was remember there was three of those um kind of holes, black holes that he went through. That we saw, which were made by three of the variants. It took three of them, and all they could do was just exile him. But yet, come along, Scott Lang? He was the one who stopped him? That doesn't make sense. <laughs> That's tacky. Ooh. Yeah, and, and, I, and, and I love Jonathan Majors in the role and everything, but at this point, with how they're doing Kang, like I'm more, I'm just more excited to see Doom at this point. Hence the name, you know. So, because <laughs> they're just doing Kang so dirty, 